Hey everyone, Eric KJ4YZI here with another video review for my YouTube channel on a new handheld I just purchased. This is the Bofung UV82L. This is a dual band amateur radio, 136 to 174 megahertz in the VHF band, 400 to 520 megahertz in the UHF band. Has a wide receive and transmit. You transmit and receive either one of those bands, as well as 65 to 108 megahertz FM radio broadcast receive. So you can listen to FM radio stations also. This radio here will also receive and transmit on marine bands, FRS, GMRS, business bands, and some others. It will not do 220 megahertz but it will do everywhere that it can receive, it will transmit. This also has uh, an upgraded firmware from the previous model, and this has a lot of the features that are similar to a UV5R that you may have, or a GT3 from Bofung. It's got all the same menu items, but a upgraded firmware and a better look and feel on the radio itself. So I'm going to show you what's in the box, open it up, uh, put it together, show you how it works, and uh, give a slight comparison to a UV5R. So when you open the box, and I bought this on eBay. The link is in the description of where I bought this. I bought this at the same store as I bought my Wuxon and my Beofeng or Bofeng GT3. Uh, so the link's in the description. Got to my house in about three days. When you open it up, here is the user manual. They're getting a lot better on the user manual from the Chinese to English translation. They are getting better at that. So that the first Bofeng manuals you couldn't even understand hardly. They weren't legible hardly at all. These are getting a lot better in the translation. So you might want to open this up, look through here. It'll tell you what the menu numbers are, uh, what the items on the screen are, and uh, how to put the battery together and all that. Okay, This radio can also, you can store frequencies out in the field from the front of the radio. So the older uh, Bofeng UV5Rs, you couldn't do that. You had to have the software. The software is available and the programming cable for this to program all your frequencies in there and alpha tags, as well as you can program just a, a standard channel or frequency into a channel from the front of the radio. I won't show you how to do that. It's in the manual. Okay. And that's a whole other video on programming these. But the programming cable that works for my UV5R and my GT3 also works for this. So you might have to use a different software. I use Chirp, um, but it, it does work with this, so give that a try. You'll see here's the UV82. Uh, now, I already charged this fully before I'm showing you this. I've already tested it out. I recommend when you get this, go ahead and drop it in the charger before anything to make sure that the battery is fully charged before you start using it. That prolongs the battery life. Let me go ahead and put the battery on here. I'll give you a look on the radio. So this battery here for the UV82 is not interchangeable with a UV5R or a GT3. It's its own battery. So if you have five or six GT uh, UV5Rs, the batteries won't fit from that onto this radio. Okay, But this basically goes on and just slides on. That's it. Okay. Here are your two screws here to attach the belt clip, right to these two screws, and the belt clip is also in your box. Okay. It comes with the wrist lanyard right here. Okay, I have one on my UV5R, so that way when you're holding on to it, you're transmitting, you don't end up dropping it in the water when you're on a boat. The antenna. You'll notice the antenna has been improved a little bit. It does look different than a regular UV5R antenna. They're working on making these antennas a little bit better because everybody gets a radio and they immediately go out and buy a new antenna. And that's what I recommend is getting a, a, a diamond or a common aftermarket antenna for high gain. But they're doing pretty good, I have to say. For these antennas, I'm not buying eight different antennas for eight different radios I have. So the ones that come with these are getting better. Um, you also get the hands-free kit. This is for your earpiece and mic that goes on your shirt with PTT buttons. Okay, so this is for hands-free. And your charger. Now, the charger here, the base that this radio drops into, is not going to interchange with your UV5R. This is its own design. Okay, 
this fits nicely into there, but your UV5R won't fit in here. Now, if you have a bunch of these, these are interchangeable. I have seven or eight of these things, and these plug into all the different bases. So what I do is usually put a couple of these on my desk on power, and then have the different bases to plug into, instead of plugging all seven of these in. And I just change the base from power supply to power supply. So they are interchangeable, this part, not this part, okay? So that's what comes in the box. Now, I'm gonna put this aside right now, and give you an idea how it compares visually to the UV5R. So here is a UV5R. You'll notice right off the bat that it's a whole different radio, a whole different case, okay? It's a totally different design of radio. I like the way this feels. This feels very, very um, heavy duty and good to hold uh, compared to one of these here. This almost feels like one of my old ICOMs that I had right here, a VHF, regular standard VHF ICOM I had was identical to the feel of this, okay? But you'll notice that it's a whole different radio. So the keypad, the keypad here has changed, okay? Instead of having your four rows of four, you have your, now it's a standard DTMF keypad here with the zero where it should be and the star and the pound, just like a telephone. The old UV5R, you had the zero and star and pound over here. So it changed that a little bit. You'll also notice that this VFO button here was on the UV5R was to change from VFO or frequency mode you know, your program channels or direct entry of a VFO frequency. That button does not exist on the UV82. To use this function on the UV82, you have to hold the menu button and power the radio on. Frequency mode. That's frequency mode, okay? Now you can type in the direct entry of your frequency. If you want to go to channel mode to all your pre-programmed channels, turn the radio off, hold menu again, turn it back on. Okay, now you're in channel mode. It shows you the channel on top and the number, the channel number on top and the frequency of that channel right below it. So that that may be uh, confusing to some people that don't watch this video. They won't know how to switch between the two. Just turn it off, hold the menu, turn it back on. Frequency mode. Okay. So you'll notice also it's got the same woman on the voice readout as a UV5R or a GT3. Okay. So keep going here. Um, the band button is still over here on the right, right where, right where the other one is. The menu button still on the left side, all right. The AB button here is also on the, a, on the man, uh, band button on the right, so that f functions as two buttons right here. <coughs> Excuse me. On the one side of the radio is the same speaker mic connection with the rubber uh, cover on it right here okay this screw here is for your lanyard so you can put your lanyard on unscrew that wrap around there and screw it back in okay the other side of the radio same buttons just in a different place however you'll notice this UV82 has a PTT button that has two separate sides to it. The top of the PTT button is for VFOA, the bottom is for VFOB. So you don't have to juggle between the two with the button, you just, if you want to transmit on a UHF frequency on VFOB, push this down. If you want to transmit on VFOA, push the top one, so you can go back and forth, okay? <coughs> the two buttons here represent the two buttons on the UV5R, they're just below the PTT now. Your call button up top is the same as the F button. This is for FM radio, okay, and uh, it's the same button, different place. The button down here below is your monitor button as well as your flashlight. You'll notice that the UV5R has the flashlight, all right, and so does UV82. UV82 has the blinking flashlight, which this UV5R does not. My late model Bofung radios do have the flashing, so that's a software upgrade for the flashing light. The original models won't flash, but you know I have to say I don't ever use the flash, 
but the actual LED flashlight is very bright on these radios. That's a good thing to have because when you're out there and you can't find your keys, turn the radio on. That's a very good thing to have. Um, I had a $400 Yesu that didn't have a light on the top of it. So, all right. And your FM radio. Okay, it goes from 65 to 108 megahertz. And uh, that's the same as a UV5R. Okay. And you can't ride a bike. I mean, there's a radio. It's got the same uh, quality of receive as FM on the FM radio. So uh, I'm happy with it. They seem to have a better receive sensitivity on the FM radio in the late models as opposed to the very beginning of the Bofang, the FM radio hardly worked at all. So that's a good thing. You'll notice also on top you have a couple LEDs here. These LEDs on the UV82 are for your standby and receive LEDs per band. So if you turn this on and we're in VFOB, if I hit VFOB button, it, the transmit light comes on. Okay, if I go to VFOA, all right, and I transmit. All right, there's your receive light. All right, and it transmits over here. So that way you can tell if the volume's off. You can see what's going on with your lights here. It'll show you that someone, the channel is active. Someone's talking. All right. So, and and the menu on this menu. has the uh, voice readout. Listen. Confirm. All right, you can turn it off, but it's got the same readout as the UV5R. So I tend to turn that off. I don't need to see or hear what's going on. I can turn that off myself. Uh, but a lot of the menu functions are the same. The step, transmit power, Vox, which, again, this Vox circuitry is better than the original Bofung. If you turn the Vox number up higher, it'll be a uh, higher sensitivity, uh, a lower sensitivity. For instance, if you have it on 1, the Vox goes off right away. If you have it on 10, you have to yell into it to have it go off. Okay. Uh, and wide, narrow band. All the, the menu functions, I think, are the exact same numbers as the previous models. But uh, you'll notice if you turn this off and turn it back on, holding the 5 key shows you your version B8. You see, that's pretty fast. B82S25. So it's got a whole separate firmware chipset than this does. Um, the actual UV5R is BFB251. And just in case you didn't know, on the UV5R, uh, if you hold the 3 key and turn it on, it'll show you your current version, BFB251. The, VF, the Bofeng UV82 is hold the 5 button version B82S25. All right. So, also a cool feature that this radio has that none of my other ones do is the option to clone. If you get a straight through cloning cable that goes from the speaker mic on this side to the speaker mic of another Beofeng uh, UV82, you can hold the 3 button and turn it on and you'll see it says cloning or copying. That will allow you to write the memories and all the settings to another radio by copying it. You hold number three. With the cable connected, you hold three on the other one. When you turn it on, it'll copy. The instructions for that are also online. I think you have to have the host on first, and then you turn on the, the uh, receiving radio, and it will transfer to that one. That's a good thing. My uh, UV5R doesn't have that. So overall, I'm impressed with it. I like the... Uh, the sensitivity, the volume on the mic on the speaker Frequency mode. is very loud. All right, if you hear that noise going off uh, when I push the PTT button, that's my speakers on my computer that are picking up RF interference. So um, you know, and there's a video online about programming this. It's the same as the Beofeng or Bofeng GT3 or UV5R. Uh, very similar. I want, that's a whole separate video, but overall I'm impressed with this radio and it's got a nice heavy duty feel to it. I wish they had a extended battery for it because the extended battery for my UV5R gets me about a week in between using it and letting it stand by. You get about a week on that thing. If I'm using it 
couple hours a day, I get a few days on it. But uh, sometimes I leave it sit there all day just monitoring, and I'll get over a week on it. And again, my $400 Yaesu handheld had a $80 battery in it that would last me four hours. So I'm pretty impressed with the battery life of these things. You can't go wrong for the price. Um, let me know what you think. It's just a brief video on the Bofeng UV82, the new model. I have a video review on when, uh, the GT3 compared to the UV5R. And i um, putting some other videos out there. So rate and comment and ask me any questions you want. And thanks for watching. This is KJ4YZI73.